Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 46 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about the head of Australia's financial services regulator chairperson Wayne Byers has said that it is now taking a more open stance on cloud usage among the banks. Hi Dave, it's great to have you back on another Australia show. Yeah, it's great to be here and you know it's uh, with that uh, curtain background and you dressed all in black, you truly look like Jesus Christ. So I bet you people are going to tune to this YouTube channel and uh, and and think that they've uh, tuned into heaven. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to do any blaspheming but oh Jesus Christ, not again. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I get heckled a bit down the street as well. So uh, anyway, um, I, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I mean, this is this is a uh, uh, kind of a fundamental change that's going forward. It kind of took these guys a long time to do it. And so, you know, they uh, ultimately had a stance in this in 2015. And, you know, here we are in 2008. And they're finally, you know, kind of accommodating the fact that uh, the real world's popping up. And, and the thing is, uh, you know, the uh, leaps and bounds in terms of how security has come and the ability to do governance in the last three years. And that's because the R&D dollars and and uh, the um, innovation dollars and certainly the um, venture capital dollars has been spent on cloud security and probably more so than on premise security. Yeah, I mean, I've got a, I've, I've got an actual question for you, actually, to, to open the show. Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought at the moment. I got these sort of, uh, had the hand of God come over me for a moment there. <laughs> I know we're going down the same sort of vein as what you've just said, but you know, do you see this being um, more cloud usage in the Australian banks then? I don't think it's really going to change it that much. I think the Australian banks, as we've had a guest on the show, or have been moving by leaps and bounds into the cloud, and certainly the banks in the United States and the banks in Europe have been doing the same thing. So they're going to put their uh, stamp of approval on it. But I think that as far as the businesses go, that they've already adopted it as far, kind of the trend going forward. It's nice having the Australian, uh, you know, uh, prudential, you know, regulation authority chairperson, you know, kind of put a, a rubber stamp on the fact that cloud computing is safe and ready to go. But it's uh, it's something that the, the businesses have seen it. And I, I think the regulators kind of you know, certainly need to have a point of authority and they need to kind of understand that there is a backstop to make sure we don't do stupid things with people's money and certainly do stupid things with security. But the reality is they should be a little further along in, the, in their thinking in terms of cloud computing. And so the lesson should go out to them that they really need to kind of keep up more and work probably closer with the, with the banks out there and work directly with the banks and have an open, earnest conversations about security. And I think that's going to make everything much more safer. If they're in essence, abstracted from kind of the core um, issues around uh, cloud computing security because the banks are, in essence, feeding them, you know, whatever they need to feed them to, you know, deal with the regulators, which they have to do all the time. Uh, we're not going to be as safe as we should be. So I kind of hope this opens up better communication channels. This has the uh, the uh, the, uh, the regulators really kind of looking out forward uh, into where cloud computing is going. You know, them certainly getting in the way of things that are going to be harmful, but staying out of the way when they're saying there's no no safety issues there. And cloud security has been, you know, certainly better than on-premise security for the last, you know, three years, just because the investment in technology dollars has gone that way. Um, so the writing's on the wall, and in essence, they need to be, you know, thinking in 2018, not 2015. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it was only last week we were talking about the uh, Obama administration cloud first strategy uh, changing and being updated in 2018. So it seems that, you know, I know we're talking about banks, but government and you know, themselves are, are updating things, uh, which is a necessity because in those, you know, five years or whatever, things have moved on in leaps and bounds when it comes to cloud security. Uh, I think Michael Keenan in the Australian government um, is, is, is digitizing government services. Um, so it's more 24 seven from a government service point of view. So there's a huge amount of change that's happening. And I think it's, it's great that everyone's being able to embrace that change, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think the government should take more of a lead in terms of how we move into technology. You know, last week we talked about the cloud first strategy that the Obama administration had you know, when cloud started to first appear on the horizon and their CIO at the time was really kind of promoting it. Now it's, you know, basically, you know, cloud sometimes if it's going to work kind of a strategy was a little better, you know, start in the right direction. But, 
you know, the core thing and the core lessons learned here is that the regular regulatory authorities are going to be a bit of a hindrance to um, productivity if they don't necessarily update the rules and regulations to keep up with technology. I mean, we saw that with the HIPAA stuff here in the States and certainly the uh, HIPAA you know, v- version in the European states as well, and as well as in the UK, where they're just waiting for these regulatory changes to kind of catch up with technology. And meanwhile, we're, you know, losing millions of dollars uh, within the industry that could go back to the patients and go back to the users, and ultimately not necessarily able to leverage enabling technology to keep up with the um, the great things that it kind of brings to humanity, you know, going forward. And but I understand the issues that, you know, it's always like, well, we, we, we can't be too careful. But the reality is you can be too careful. You can put, an, put a hindrance on productivity and life-saving activities because we're, in essence, overthinking security and overthinking governance and therefore putting regulations in place to really kind of hinder uh, the fact that we're, you know, stepping on the line of safety or basically moving to, this, to a sa- safer position. Uh, but we're we're doing so at the expense of productivity, and therefore doing so at the you know expense of services to the citizens and services to patients and services to banking customers, things like that. And so there has to be a balance that needs to be con- uh, considered. And as I uh, you know mentioned earlier in the show, you know this is about the regulators and the um, the people who are they're regulating, you know working closer together. There's kind of a very um, Oh, adversarial relationship with them right now. Not that they're adversaries under the fact that the the banks are, in essence, treating the regulators uh, with kid gloves and not necessarily communicating with them as candidly as they should, where the regulators also should have the same candid communication. And the reason the reason they're not doing that is because they're afraid they're going to get slapped with fines and, you know, say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. And uh, I think those days are over. I think the regulators really kind of need to work closely with the uh, the people who they're regulating in order to get you know, the positive outcome for the, you know, the patients, the citizens, the banking customers, you know, the people who are ultimately going to get rewards of benefit, rewards or, you know, deficits from this sort of a, you know, process. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I think uh, it it draws nicely onto um, a show we did actually with the CIO from the NAB Bank, uh, Yuri Misnik, and he spoke in great detail about, you know, how regulations uh, do constrict the ideology of what you know organizations such as banks want to offer customers uh, from that you know the continuity of, of, of app development etc you know that level of security which a customer expects and it, and it should be a given uh, based on you know working within the banking world unfortunately you know banks have been letting customers down uh, with regards to security on a number of occasions not naming names um, but yeah I mean there were some great points mentioned there and I think you've covered some some great points there as well Dave on that and and it brings us on nicely to the oh and may I just say that if you haven't watched the Yuri Misnik um, show the the NAB show National Australia Bank show um, I'll put a link in the description box as well or it'll be on the screen somewhere uh, where you can check that out and, and go and watch those shows because they're pretty awesome shows um, and yeah so Dave it moves us on nicely to your top three tips for this week so uh, yeah it'd be great to hear those yeah number one um, you know when you can avoid waiting for regulations um, you know I think a lot of uh, uh, banks, healthcare organizations, you know, anybody who's dealing with accounting regulations, certainly here in the States as well as Australia, you know, are kind of waiting for regulations to change over time and therefore are kind of pushing back on building the information systems they need to, in essence, automate the things they need to automate. And so this is about you creating or leveraging cloud computing, DevOps, you know, so certainly all the different enabling technologies have today, not that they're great unto themselves, but when combined, We're setting up the ability for these organizations to change around any kind of regulatory changes, as well as any kind of market changes, as well as any kind of customer demand changes, and do so, you know, really kind of at the speed of need. And so I'd rather see you invest in building an architecture and building technology that can change versus waiting for regulations to drop. That's going to be counterproductive. Understand the value that, you know, this is going to exist in the out years. And so, you know, going forward, we're making regulatory changes today to, in essence, adjust to some of the demands of the regulators that are coming down. But we have to think, you know, two years, three years, five years out, and the regulations are going to change a lot uh, in the next five years, just because they're adapting to technology. They're going to make some mistakes, have to back some of those things on. There's chances are there's going to be, you know, some crisis that emerges or some security breach that occurs, which really kind of drives additional regulations, things like that. And you really shouldn't fear those things or wait for the regulations to show up. You should really kind of work on 
setting up an architecture that's going to be able to adapt any kind of regulatory changes coming forward, not only now, which is we can do you know, pretty easily, but you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, it's going to be go to the value of the business. Even if you have to overspend on leveraging technology and using technology, uh, that's going to be the, the best, best way to do it. And make sure to invest in training. We have a training show for a reason. I think people are you know, really having training fly under the radar screen. But ultimately, any kind of regulatory things need to be understood in the context of what you're doing with technology. I find this over and over again. I have within my clients over the last 10 years. They, there's, they have a tendency not to understand the core issues with regulations and the real world applications of the regulations. And then they, uh, in essence, limit themselves because they think the regulations are, are stating things that really that re- it really doesn't state. And I think you can make lots of mistakes and assuming that the regulations are limiting you when they're not. And I, I think that uh, you know really kind of comes down with people training in the regulations. We have people who are, you know, the SMEs and the regulations uh, in terms of how they exist, exist technology. They're helping making decisions because I don't know how many meetings I've been in over the last you know ten years with clients where they've expressed some sort of a pushback around u- using cloud computing because of a certain regulation that they fear is going to prevent you know the putting of PII information on cloud, HIPAA information on cloud, things like that. And that's almost never the case. And in essence, you have to educate people on doing that. But I think they need to get the expertise in-house to explain to people how we're leveraging technology in the context of these regulations and how to interpret these regulations correctly. Yeah, very, very good points there, Dave. And yeah, the third one, especially for me, is the putting cloud into the uh, cloud and regulations into the correct context of the business. I think that is so important and, and extremely uh, misinterpreted sometimes and very frustrating um, you know when the conversations just cannot be joined uh, joined up in a, in some sort of a methodical way between the context and regulations and, and cloud and, and, and the implementation of all of that as well in the business it's extremely frustrating. Dave thank you so much for being a part of the Australia show this week I really appreciate that as always. It's always great to be here. Excellent. Thanks, man. And look, you know, check out Dave on Twitter as well, which is his Twitter is at Davey Linthicum. Uh, my Twitter is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Obviously, that's where you're watching this video. Check us out. Get in touch. Uh, you can tweet us. We're tweeting all the social media all the time as well. So plenty of content out there. David writes some great blogs for us as well. All the links are, are in the description box below. So check that out. And uh, thanks for watching. And until next week.